and we are back is all about uh, abstinence but not abstinence it's about reducing the teenage pregnancies in our young ones out there most of the times we even concentrate on only the girls what about the boys you know there are contraceptives they can use as well as much as we want to prevent them from having sex the reality on the ground is it's happening so how do we prevent teenage pregnancies from happening and even STDs? I have with me um, Mary, Mary Tay. She is a clinical quality advisor with Marie Stopes Ghana, and she's here to help us with this particular conversation. Now, for you at home, you can also join the conversation. You can send in your messages. We'll read it live on air. As we are streaming, you can also hit the share button on Facebook. Let everybody on your timeline enjoy it as well. And put in your questions on Facebook. We'll read it live on air. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Great. And uh, earlier you did mention that we went to the same school. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you went up here. <laughs> I was at <laughs> I haven't said this on live television yet, but yes, I was at the table prefect. Well, and a funky one too. <laughs> We'll get to that. But anyway, Mary, uh, the reality on the ground with regards to, you know, teenage pregnancy, the hike is quite worrying. And like I said earlier in my intro, talking to 40-year-olds and they telling me that we know about this already, so don't pretend like we don't know. And these are people, children, who are brave. For others, they'll pretend they don't know at all. They go do their acts and then... The consequences are next. Now, as adults, as parents, uh, as citizens, concerned citizens, we ought to take the bold step. But the question here is, even with women who are out there, who are married, are they accepting contraceptives? And what's the statistics with regards to women who are on contraceptives in Ghana? All right. So um, I'll refer to our 2017 maternal health survey. Okay. And then in that survey, if you look at women in their reproductive age, all women, about 25% are using contraceptive. So that's a modern contraceptive prevalence rate in Ghana. Okay. That's 25% for all women. The funny thing is that if you look at uh, it for young ladies between the ages of 15 to 19, mm. the rate is slightly lower, just about 23.8%. And so, I mean, if you look for all women, just about a quarter in their reproductive age are using contraceptives. And even for teenagers, it's even lower. Mm. What's the reason? How come women are not bold enough to come on to contraceptives? Well, I, I think uh, if you look at our context and our setting, you know, um, we love children. We love the idea of having children. We uh, define our femininity by our ability to have children. And so there's the, there's the love and the need to have more children in our setting. But then also there's the the fear of backlash from society, especially for young people. If uh, they get to know you're using contraceptive, oh, now you're a bad girl. Mm. You're supposed to be in school. You're not supposed to be having sex. What's your own using a contraceptive? And so people shy away from using it just uh, to run away from that backlash of being tagged with a bad girl or somebody who is having sex. Is religion also a factor? Mm. <laughs> a million dollar question. <laughs> of course, religion is a factor. All our churches preach abstinence, which, is, which in itself it's is good. good. Right. Because it's not just about preventing pregnancy. I mean, if you abstain, then, of course, uh, you are preventing STIs and other reproductive tract infections. So abstinence is good. But then, uh, For we how are long? abstaining. Mm. I mean, the, the statistics are there to show that we are really not abstaining. So, yes, churches preach abstinence, which in itself is good. But the question is, is it working? It's, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's not. Mm. Because if you look at our teenage pregnancy rates, I, for instance first had abstinence like over 30 years ago. <laughs> and I'm still hearing abstinence and really there hasn't been any significant decline in a teenage pregnancy rate. So the question is, is abstinence working? Mm. So the church is, yes, let's preach abstinence, but then let's also encourage contraceptive use, especially for our married folks. Mm. Now, Marie Stops has a way of getting, you know, mothers bringing their young girls or boys uh, to the place to make sure that they are educated on sexual stuff and especially if they have to go on contraceptives, they do. How did Marie Stops do this? All right. So, I mean, at Marie Stops, we provide a safe space for everybody, irrespective of age. Um, we are non judgmental. And so you won't have us say, does your mother know you are here? <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that clip. Mm. So everybody is welcome. And so we, make, we, we, we provide that safe space for young people to walk in and then talk to us about their problems. 
in any case, they won't get that in schools. They may not get that at home. They may not get that at church. And so we as professionals need to provide that space. And so we do that. And then we also try to use vari various avenues that we reach out to young people. So, I mean, young people are very prime on social media. And so that's one way to really get them. And you know, I said, like, all the backlash that comes with contraceptive use, they don't really want to come out and let you know. So they prefer hiding back door somewhere but still bring out their issue across and we have a contact center that does that perfectly so okay. you don't necessarily even have to walk in you can just sit in your home call us you are counseled on the phone and depending on what contraceptive that you use that's the beautiful thing we can actually deliver it to you oh wow yeah I so see. that's one way that we are getting the young people and then also trying to be very uh, friendly and putting up a very good atmosphere. Now, talking about the contraceptives, I know there are different types of contraceptives, and of course, people at home who are not on contraceptives, they've heard so many things, the negative sides of it, and some are scared to come on there. Let's talk about some of the contraceptives and the positive aspect of it. All right. So, um, basically, the contraceptives are categorized based on um, length of use. So, we have permanent contraceptive, which is uh, good for people who do not want to have children at all mm. or don't want to have children anymore because like i said it's permanent so once you go on it um, you can't reverse it and then we have long acting reversible contraceptive and i'm stressing on the word reversible so even though these are contraceptive methods that um, work for a very long time you can stop taking them and then get pregnant okay, okay? and basically they are what we call the iud and then the implants they work between three years 10 years mm. right and then we have the short acting reversible contraceptive so these are metals that work uh, between three years sorry three months one month to three months mm. and then condoms and um, also and so based on your need your specific situation how long you want to prevent pregnancy and the ease of use any of these will work for you the ideal thing is to go to a provider, talk to them, we engage, we have a conversation, we ask about your reproductive goals, what is uh, acceptable to you in terms of side effects, what you are comfortable with, what you are not comfortable with, and then we help you to choose the method that will suit you and your lifestyle. Mm. Talking about the permanent one, how is it like? Okay, so there are basically two types, one for men, one for women. So the men is the vasectomy, I'm guessing. Absolutely. Okay. All right, so what happens with vasectomy is, um, the man's tubes or the tubes through which sperm travel are tied and then cut. Usually people um, liken it to castration where your balls are taken off. Absolutely not. That's not what happens with vasectomy. So it's just the tubes that transport sperm to the woman. They are tied and then cut. Nothing is taken out of the man. And so um, it's like the transportation uh, passage is kind of blocked. And so the sperm are not able to travel out to fertilize a woman's egg. It does not affect uh, the man's performance. It does not affect erection. It does not affect ejaculation. For men who have vasectomy, they will still erect. They will still enjoy sex. They will still release a fluid or semen. But you cannot get a woman pregnant. And it's permanent. So that's why I said it's for people who do not want to have children at all or do not want to have children again. Because once you do it, that is it. You can't um, reverse it. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then the woman? Yes. And so for the woman, it's called tubal ligation. So it's the same process. The woman's tubes, the tubes through which the egg pass are also tied and cut. So nothing is taken out of the woman. People think that you take the womb out, you take the eggs out. No, we don't do that. It's just the tubes that are tied and cut. So same as it works for the migraine, it's like the passage is kind of blocked. And so the egg is not able to travel into the womb to meet a sperm for it to get fertilized. It's also permanent, uh, not reversible. It's good for people who do not want to have children again. The uh, one thing I want to add is that vasectomy and BTL do not have side effects. Okay. So absolutely, because nothing goes into your system no hormones and so you do not get any side effects at all so for women you still have your menses you still um, menstruate every month only that you cannot get pregnant i think for the men i've said you can still perform okay there's no pregnancy okay okay now we come to the uh, long acting reversible yes and you said that's the iur iud and the implant yes. now talking about this let's link it to the young girls out there can any young girl go for an implant or an iud 
absolutely. So you see, the thing about contraception is um, I mentioned lifestyle. It's what you are comfortable with. It's not necessarily with age. People will say, oh, for young people, once you are starting, start with um, a short-term method. Like the but, pills? Exactly. But really, I mean, there's, there's really nothing wrong if you want to uh, use a long-term method. I will personally even recommend long-term methods for young, younger ladies. Because once you take a long-term method, there's nothing to worry about again. Like I said, it can last between three years to ten years. These are people who are in school or learning a trade. And so in, in the next three years, I'm not ready to have a baby. So if you liken it to a short-term method where every day you have to either swallow a pill or every month you have to take an injection, that means frequent visits to the health center, that means paying money every month, as compared to taking a long-term method today, and then that is it. You forget until the next three years, five years. And the good thing about these long-term uh, reversible contraceptives is that you can stop them anytime you want. So if you take a method like an implant, which works for five years or three years, it doesn't necessarily mean keep it for three years or five years. If in six months' time you think you are the richest woman in Ghana and you want to have thousands of babies, all you need to do is just take it out and then you can have your babies. But people are, uh, also believe that once you do it, the side effect which can you know, affect your reproductive system. All right. So there are side effects associated with the methods that are hormonal. Okay. Before then, let me just say that any medicine as has well has side effects. effects. Okay. Even the normal common paracetamol has side effects. And so the hormonal contraceptives, yes, they do have side effects. You'll be surprised to know that some of the side effects are even desirable. Yeah. Like? Weight gain. So some of the metals will make you put a little bit of weight. And there are women who want that. Okay. So some will specifically come to you and tell you, oh, Charlie, I want the one that will make me gain weight. Okay. So you remember I was saying that when you have a conversation with your um, provider, your lifestyle and your situation will be put into consideration and then you are given a method that will suit you. There is somebody like me who doesn't want to gain weight. And so for me, I will share away from, I run away from those methods that will make me gain weight. Right. There are methods that will interfere with your menses. Mm. And people like it because... I mean, you know how uncomfortable menstruation can be. There are people who actually don't want to have it. And so people will go in for methods that will stop them from having their menses. So there are side effects, yes. But like I said, some of them might even be desirable. However, it's a matter of explaining to people what the side effects are. Now, side effects are not necessarily bad, mm. especially if people know in advance about them and what to do. But when we so, talk about the side effect, does it affect everybody or there are people that they can go through that side effect and others will never experience the side effect? Yes. So side effects uh, happens differently for different people. Just, we, you know, we have different bodies. Dif our bodies react differently. And so I may take a cup of Gary and I'm like, this. somebody will take a cup of Gary every day and then they, 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 they start becoming big. So we, act, we react differently. So even though there are side effects, not everybody experiences those side effects and not everybody experiences them the same way or at the same frequency. So for instance, like I said, one of the side effects is changes in bleeding patterns. So sometimes you may not have your menses at all. Sometimes the quantity will reduce or the number of days that you bleed will reduce. There's somebody who will not experience any of this. So they will have their menses every month. And then there's somebody who will go through all of the three changes. So some months she will not have her menses at all. Some months she will have it, but it will come for just a day. Some months she will have it, but it's just a small. And then there's some, like I said, there's somebody who will not even experience it at all, but they are using the same, the same uh, let, method. Let me bring you to this. Now, look at, uh, talking about what you're talking, these kind of side effects. If I'm married and I already have children and I'm not looking at having any more children, these side effects, I might be able to align with it. But when we come to the young girls out there, 16 years of 18, 14, 15, the person goes on, you know, these uh, methods. And then all of a sudden the person starts, you know, not menstruating regularly and all of that. I mean, won't that affect the person even psychologically? All right. So that's why it's good to be counseled first before you take these methods. So you know in advance what to expect. The other thing is when you go off this method, whatever side effects you are feeling, may you get back to normal. So if you are not menstruating because you're on a particular hormonal method, once you stop using it, your menses resumes. If you are having changes in the menses, once you stop it, the menses resumes. Does it so take it's a more while? Like, well, well, it depends for each individual. Okay. Okay. Like I said, our bodies react differently. What I would be quick to add on is the injectable, the three months injectable contraceptive. Mm. Okay. And everybody should know this. So for that one, 
there's what we call delay return to fertility. When you go off it, it might take a while for you to get pregnant, which is, I mean, it's a side effect. Don't worry, it's not gloomy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as gloomy as you okay. think. So what um, providers or a counselor will tell you that if you are on that method and you want to get pregnant, then go off it early. So for instance, we are in February, mm -hmm. right? So I want to get uh, pregnant in July and I'm on that three month injection. Stop taking it now. Okay. So that by the time we get to July, everything has become normal. You can't go off it today and get pregnant today. So it's all about getting the right information. The other thing, I, the I, other bit is that, like I said, once you go off the method, your body returns back to its normalcy. So whatever side effects you were facing would resolve and then you are back to normal. It happens differently for people. So somebody can go off a method this month, the next month they are pregnant. Somebody can go off it this month and it takes like six months to even a year before they get pregnant. Pregnancy will definitely okay. So it's it just that it happens differently. Not at all. <laughs> Absolutely not. So contraceptive methods do not cause infertility. And that's a serious misconception out there. They prevent you from getting pregnant for just a period. Once the period is over, you can't get pregnant again. If you are not getting pregnant, there might, there might be other factors okay. that you need to look at. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a contraception. That is causing it does not contrast no contraceptive causes infertility except the permanent methods okay that i said will mm. not make you get pregnant but all the long acting short acting methods do not cause infertility they can cause delay in returning to fertility but like i said it means you have to stop it early um, as uh, compared to the time that you want to get mm. pregnant. What of the boys? Do we have the parents bringing the boys in for contraceptives as well? <laughs> okay so usually it's just the girls that come in if you look at all the methods that we have, I mean, most of them, ladies get a lot, a wider range of um, methods as mm. compared to men, which is just condom and then vasectomy. Young boys are not ready for vasectomy because I'm sure they want to have children. And so for them, it's just the condom, which is readily available anywhere, <laughs> even in supermarkets. So you don't necessarily even need to walk into a clinic to get it. So that's so, I mean, for them, Access is very, very easy. Uh, you, know, you don't need a healthcare worker. You don't necessarily need a health worker to be able to use a condom. Unlike the methods for the girls, injectable, implant, IED, where you need a healthcare worker to administer it. And so for that one, you necessarily have to walk in. Mm. And so for the boys, it's very easy. It's only condom. It's only condom. For now. Okay. For now. There are studies going on. There are clinical trials that are looking at other methods, a full range of methods like we have for the women. But uh, it's not been published yet, so we'll just keep praying. They will also have options, but for now, their options are limited and mm. access is very easy for them. So you don't really get them working. They're working for other services like STIs, but for contraception, it's really hard. Mm. We're talking about uh, how to curb, you know, the rise in teenage pregnancy in young ones lately. And of course, Marie Stobbs is here, a representative from Marie Stobbs, that's Merite. She's here to help us with this particular conversation. Now, if you're home and you have any questions or contribution, you can also go ahead and send your message because we are streaming live on Facebook. Just leave your message there. Now, these are three contraceptive uh, methods that anybody can go on. is the permanent, uh, the long-acting reversible, and the short short acting reversible as well now the permanent one is for both the men and the women the vasectomy and you said the ladies one is called tuba ligation tuba ligation and then for the long acting reversible the iud and the implants and for the short acting uh, reversible you have the injections the pills and the condoms and uh, she was advising that of course if you're done having your children you don't want to have any child at all you can go for the permanent now let's concentrate on the young boys and girls now for the girls you can do the long acting reversible for your child this is so uh this is because you don't want your child to get pregnant you don't want to you know have any forgetfulness where your child doesn't go for the injection and then after that you end up your child end up getting pregnant so to prevent this from happening she says you can go for the iud or implant so and you know people are of the opinion that the girl is too young for iud or implants people think implants or iud is for only people who have already had children but why, why this misconception? What's going on? Well, like you said, it's, it's, a, mis it's a misconception. They are, too young, they are too young to have sex, but they are having sex. So why can't they use contraception, right? And you see, I think it's all based on the fact that we all connote the word family planning to 
having a family. And so at that age, they don't have any families yet. So why should they be using something that's supposed to be using, used by women who have families? But really, age, uh, how do you call it? At that age, they can take an implant, they can take an IED. It works the same as it will work for adults. So really, there's absolutely, it's, Nothing it's just the whole misconception mm. thing. Yeah. So what age do we uh, advise parents to start talking to their children about sex? And what age can a girl get contraceptive? All right. So any girl who is in the sexual reproductive age. Age like? Yeah. So, so, so we, when we talk about women in reproductive age, that's women between 15 years to 49 years. That's the definition. However, girls as young as 10 years have started menstruating, mm -hmm. 12 years have started menstruating, are getting pregnant, are even having children. So once the person is sexually active, they've started the, I mean, the whole process of being a woman, which is menstruation, it means they can get pregnant. So even outside the 15 years, once the, the girl gets into that age, they are sexually active. It's okay to talk to them. And but what if you don't That's... know your child is sexually active? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. They might not tell you that I'm sexually active. So then how do you say that I'm going to put you on a method? Yes. So they will not tell, not that they might not. They will talk to their friends. See, so I think as parents, we need to start the conversation early. Once our young uh, one starts growing up, we need to start the conversation. But we should structure it so that it's age appropriate. Of course, at five years, that's not when you talk about contraception. You can talk about changes in the body. As they go on, then you can just um, go on to talk about um, menstruation, and then you can start talking about contraception. But it should be gradual. Hmm. Um, I, I don't think parent, for parents, we should even wait for them to get there before. We need to start the conversation even before they start. Because I think that for contraception, even before you have your first sex, you should know about it mm. and know how to prevent it before you even do the act. Not to do the act and then now you are coming back to find out. You never know. Your first, your very first one can end up in pregnancy. And so for parents, we need to start the conversation early. And I think schools also have a role to play in that. Mm. Um, I think it's high time that our school curriculum also look at talking to girls about contraception. Um, at the basic school, secondary school, the junior high school, and we should start the conversation. Uh, let me ask you this, as a rep from Marie Stopes, um, have you tried to go to churches to see if you can speak with the pastors to advise the young and the teenagers that are there? Because you see, it's happening, it's a reality, but it looks like religion is not allowing this to happen. So tell us your experience, because we ought to know. Yes. Okay, so uh, even before I come in with that experience, you, you said that it's happening, which is quite true. If you look at our 2014 um, demographic and health survey, uh, women in their reproductive, for women in their reproductive age, at age 15, 11% of them have already started having sex. 11% doesn't look too alarming, right? Mm. At age 18, 44%, yes, have already started having sex. So it's high time we all, all accept that it is happening. Mm whether Christian or not, our young people are having sex. And so, yes, we do get the backlash when you try to go to churches and then talk to them. They try to limit you on what you want to say. Talk about the reproductive system, menstruation, don't talk about contraception. But we need to accept. I mean, there's no better evidence than our health survey. We need to accept that it's happening. So we need to talk about it. And so I would, um, I would really um, appeal and then reach out to the churches. Not everybody is abstaining. We want them to abstain, yes, but not everybody is abstaining. So for those who are not abstaining, what are we doing mm. for them? I mean, Ghana Health Service has abstinence, faithfulness, and then contraception use. So for those who are not abstaining, why not also support them in that regard to also use contraception? It's, it's a collective effort. We, can, we as uh, clinical providers can do our parts and then the churches should also the do, churches do their part. <laughs> now you at home can join the conversation and so the number is on the screen right now. Do call us and share your opinion on this particular topic with us. This is Joy Prime Television and the segment is Prime Insight. We want to reduce teenage pregnancy as much as possible. Now there's so many you know, uh, myths about contraceptives but today we are being told by Marie Stopes that the kind of myths that we are hearing are not true. Uh, some might be a little true however, uh, not everything is true so they are trying as much as possible to make sure we understand how you can help your girl child on a contraceptive to prevent uh, teenage pregnancy now another thing i wanted to ask you mary with regards to these young ones um because 
most of them are not on contraceptives and they get pregnant do we see an increment in abortion cases then all right so yeah um yes abortion, abortion cases are happening what i'll be quick to say is that it's there's there's a decrement in unsafe abortion okay yes unsafe abortion was very high um, when we weren't uh, talking so much about abortion but now it's it's gone down people are having abortion but then they are doing it safely right so yes we, we are having the uh, young people um, having abortions mm, in the country but in a the good safe news way. is that they are doing it in a okay. safe way and the unsafe one has actually reduced okay that's good let me go for my first caller hello good morning patients hello patients oh, hello good morning good morning how are you I'm fine, thank you. Great. Talk to us, patients. Um, I'm also on um, family planning. The implants. I I actually didn't join the conversation earlier. I just joined the. I just joined during the later part, so I didn't actually get to listen to everything. Mm. But some of the side effects I'm seeing is um, from my menstruation. I hardly menstruate. Sometimes it will come like two days after three months. And then sometimes quite long. I don't get it at all. All right, patience. All right, um, so patients, I think, um, Mary, you, you say something to patients for me. Yeah, hello patients. So, um, well done for um, taking control of your reproductive health. So the implants, I mentioned earlier on that, yes, it does have side effects and bleeding changes is one of those side effects. So sometimes you might not get your menses at all. Sometimes you get intermittent bleeding and that is what you're experiencing. It's a normal side effect with the implant patients. There's absolutely nothing wrong. When you go over, when you are ready to get pregnant and you take your implants out, your menses will come back to normal. What the side effect you're experiencing right now is normal with the implant. So there's nothing to worry about. If you take it out, your menses will come back to normal. What if it doesn't? It will. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, good it's, morning, Hannah. It will. If good it doesn't. Morning. If it doesn't, then it's, there's something wrong that needs to be investigated, but it's not the implant. Okay. Hannah, talk to us. Good morning. Good morning. Please. I just tuned in to your station mm. and I heard my clinical advisor say something about the long-term method, mm. like the vasectomy and the tubal ligation for the woman. I just want to add this. I didn't know, I don't even know whether she included it earlier on. But for the vasectomy, for the first 20 ejaculation after the surgery, the man can impregnate the woman. So oh, right. if you do the surgery for the man, we do advise them that they should use condom for the first 20 ejaculation. Okay. Hello? Yes, I said okay. Mm -hmm. So for the first 20 ejaculation, the man can impregnate the woman. And what we have to also know about contraceptive is that it will prevent us from being getting pregnant. But for STI, it will never so if you want to prevent yourself, either you use the condom. The condom is basically for the pregnancy and the prevention of STI. STI. Okay. So young ladies that we are coming, we are just getting to a uh, fertile stage. We should be very careful because now HIV is real. Mm. That's what I want to include. It. Thank you so much. We are very grateful. Let me go to Kesseman and speak with Bernice. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, how are you? Great, I'm doing well. Great, talk to us. Okay, I want to thank you guys for a good work done. You're welcome. I have tried the injectables before. Um, it didn't work out for me. I was gaining weight and the menses wasn't coming. So I think after four injections, I stopped. Then I got pregnant, had my last baby. I, want, I told the doctor I won't be having any more kids, so I wanted the permanent one. Mm -hmm. He refused to do it for me. He said I was too young. I was 31 by then. He said I was too young, so he refused. And I don't want to have any more kids. I have four girls. I think that's okay. Due to that, my sexual life is some way. I can't have normal sex anymore. I have to do contraceptive sometimes, which is not really helping me. 
I mean the emergency pill, which is not really helping because when I take it the next month, my menses is some way. So I don't know what to do now. Okay, um, don't don't cut the call yet, please. Don't okay. cut the call, Mary. You have questions before you answer your question. No, I, I think uh, I just wanted to uh, make some emphasis on her conversation. Okay. First of all, I'll give her a contact to reach out to us for us to have a discussion on the tubal ligation, which she can have. Okay. Uh, but then I also want to address the fact that having a tubal ligation hasn't got nothing to do with age. Because it's a permanent method, and sometimes health providers think that later on you may regret and want to have children. And so okay. sometimes we try to... People try to talk women out of it because there may be later regret. But age has got absolutely nothing to do with your ability to, um, with your e eligibility to have a permanent method, the tubal ligation that she wanted to have. It's just a matter of maybe the fear of regret. But if the person is certain that I do not want to have any children, irrespective of age, they can have a tubal ligation done. So, madam, if really you want to have a tubal ligation, I think I'll leave our contact details behind. Get in touch, and then you can come, and then we can have that conversation. She okay, also, Bernice. Right. Okay, thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Bernice. Let me go speak with um, Gloria from Nkoko. Good morning, Gloria. Good morning. Yes, Gloria, talk to us. Um, as my sister was saying earlier, she said um, she had the injection one. And for me, I'm also having the injectable one. And you know, I'm having, I, I sometimes feel some things in my breast. Mm. Gloria, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 23. 23, okay, all right. Yes. All right, so um, you are out of the teenage age, but we still have to address your concern. And uh, before we address your concern, would you ever put your child on uh, contraceptives? No, I won't. Why? I, I would rather talk to her. Okay. In okay. All right. Thank you. But hold on. Um, I think um, Mary will address your concern. Okay. Thank you for calling. Okay. All right. Okay. Mary. All right. So, not to just her, but all the calls that are coming about the side effects and information, they are quite <coughs> true. I mean, this is a limited time space. So, I can't talk about every single side effect the way I'll talk to somebody who is requesting mm. for the service. Mm -hmm. So, yes, the side effects that she's saying, there's breast, the breast tenderness. It's one of the side effects associated with the hormonal method. So, these are, you get all these detailed information if you walk in to get a service. In that particular service, you'll be told everything concerning the side effects. So, breast tenderness is one of the things. You see, the funny thing about contraception is that they work just the way as the normal hormones we have in our body. The hormones that control ovulation, menstruation, pregnancy. And you know, as we ovulate, we menstruate, we get these feelings, mm -hmm. the breast tenderness and all that. And so because it's the same hormones that are used to make this contraceptive product, you get some of these same side effects that we get with our normal hormones in the system. So yes, breast tenderness is one of those things. If it's uncomfortable, talk to your provider. There are ways that um, we can tell you about ways to uh, reduce some of these discomforts. Oh. But they are just short, short lasting. They go away. Mm. Let me go to our face. So doctors, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, how are you? I'm doing well and you. Fine, thank you, Dr. Has. Talk to us. You're looking great this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I did uh, the cyana, but I cannot find, um, I, I cannot menstruate, but whenever I'm washing my V pad, I sense like, um, blood. I feel like there is something there. When I put my hands inside, I see some dark blood very dark but it never comes out unless i force it out i'm i'm, I'm a bit worried so mm -hmm. i don't know what to do now okay but docas will you put your teenage daughter on contraceptive oh yes yes you will. i will if you will which one the injection one maybe the cyanide i said earlier on okay remember i did uh, three years. Mm. I did three. I was very slim, and my dear, when you see me now, you are going to shout. Oh. Mm -hmm. My my problem was I couldn't menstruate. I had a problem with my head, tiredness, dizziness, a lot. So I decided to stop. Okay. Then I stopped when I got married. It's very true. I got married. I stopped. I am I I've given birth to a baby girl and I've started again. Mm. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I decided to discuss with the injection and see 
what will happen with that one too. It's not bad though, but my only problem is the first month the menstruation came. It came even for um for the past four or five years I have never menstruated that well. It was very, very fine, the blood, everything was cool. But for the following months I think I'm in the last month now, three months, so for the following and the last month, the blood is not coming unless you force it out. You see, when you are washing your V, you have to put your hands inside. Mm-hmm. So whenever you put your hands inside, I can feel that black blood, yes. Is. And that's where the issue is. And Mary will address that for us. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank Mary. you very much. All right. So um, let me just say that. This lady and then there was a caller earlier who mentioned that they were on metals, they stopped and they had children. Yeah. So this goes to address the fact that you contraception does not have cause your children. infertility. Right. So even with all the side effects, like I said, when you go off it, everything becomes normal, you can get um, pregnant. Now the issue, so the cyanide she's mentioning is one of the injectable contraceptives. It's actually self-injectable, you can inject it yourself. Okay. It's been designed that way. Okay. So. Yes, uh, what she said is one of the side effects that I spoke about, the changes. Sometimes it will come, sometimes it will not come. First of all, um, Madam Kuala, please don't be inserting your hand into your vagina. <laughs> your vagina. <laughs> so first of all, it's not hygienic to do that. Just wash the outer area. Um, whatever you are feeling, like I said, it's a normal side effect. What about effect. the black reddish thing that comes out? Right, so you know, it's just like when you are menstruating. I don't know if you've said it, but the color... But she it, says she doesn't menstruate. So whatever she's having there, it's it's sort of menstrual blood. Even though it's it's not the normal one because of the changes that the contraceptive is giving her. So it's basically menstrual blood. Okay. okay. It, what the body is our body is such has been designed in such a way that whatever is inside it will flow out on its own. You don't need to go in there and, and, and bring it, it out. out. You're actually be causing yourself more harm. Okay. Right. Uh, let me go to Akimoda. Good morning, Portia. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah. Me pa cho wo eh me ye implant no na me wo ba 7 months na me menstruate ye si 7 months no na me ye implant no no me ye the following week na me menses no e ba ye e ba ye no si si ya me ba ne 9 months me menstruate bi ye inti no I don't know me ni se da chi di a mi jaya se ni tu ni a wo se ni jaya so na me menses ni mbra ka kansa ma yo Okay. Now, Portia, as I'll be Catalina, no, I just want to know, will you put your female uh, teenage uh, girl on uh, contraceptive? Yeah. You will. And yeah. if you will, which one? Uh, in car, my pet, no original. But I say no original, I say, yeah, I'm a free sister, I'm a kakana, yeah, I'm a ba. Okay. All right. Come up in original. Okay. Thank you so much, Portia. Right. Please yeah. answer to Portia for right. me. So, the original is also a, it's one of the injectables. Uh, it looks like the injectables are very popular. It's actually the most used method in Ghana. Okay. Yes, that's what a lot of men use. Right. Mm. Right. So, it's all about the side effect, the changes in the menses. And I think I've mentioned it over and over again that all the hormonal contraceptive method cause changes in your menses. The change is not harmful. If you go off it, your message will become normal. So, madam, if you stop it now because you want your message to come, you might end up getting pregnant. Don't worry about the change that you are having. It's a normal side effect. Changes in your message is a normal side effect with the hormonal contraceptive, and the injectable is one of them. So don't worry, you are fine. Mm. We have a first caller being a man on the line. Good morning, Mohammed. Hello, Mohammed. Yeah, hello. Yes, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. Great. And I want to commend you people for doing, yeah, doing a very great job. And the enlightenment is very, very powerful. Uh, my question is that, please, is it possible that you can put your daughter on any of the contraceptives without letting her know what you have done on her? Or is it just that you must let her know? Because from, from my perspective, I'm seeing that Letting her know in what you have done, and, and like she, she is fortified, she will just go around and be doing anything. So, is it possible you do it without her knowledge? Okay, Mohammed, that's a very <laughs> relevant question, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 but thank you. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. I, 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 I really understand it. We do get, we do get that. You know, parents bring their children. Oh yeah, kola bonde pa yaman o mema ni because then you go. So, I think you need to talk to your child. Okay, because 
some of these contraceptives, with the side effect that comes with them, they need to know mm. so that when they go in, they are getting the side effects. It doesn't scare them. And so you really need to let them know what you are doing so for them. So you take them through and counseling? You take them through counseling. And in any case, there should always be consent. In every medical procedure, there should be, there should be consent. You can't force something on somebody when they don't want it or they don't know what you are giving them. So Mohammed, um, I understand your, 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 your position as a parent. It's hard. You are scared if you do it for them, they, they, they will go wayward. But I think you need to talk to them. You are better off having them know and protecting themselves than having them not know and then go and do things that will bring problems to you. Mm. Good morning, Kojo. Hi, talk to us, Kojo. Yeah, I want to add up to the main concern, Tommy. Yes, sir. Oh, can you speak up for me, please? I'm struggling to hear you. I'm saying I want to add up to the main um, um, uh, vasectomy. Okay. Yeah. I've done one myself, and in fact, all the perception goes, the side effects. In fact, I haven't experienced anything like that. And for me, I encourage men who think, well, they don't, have, they don't want to have kids again, and uh, probably they want to take that step. They can do it. Um, it will not affect your performance. In fact, it will not have any effect on you. Okay, Kojo. But Kojo, will you put your teenage girl on contraceptive? Why not? Mm. So far as she is a girl and... Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, you said so far as she's a girl and what? Yeah, she can't full control. It's better for her to To go on a contraceptive, well, all right. Man, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Kojo. Uh, so, like you said earlier, the vasectomy, there's no side effects whatsoever. Okay. So you, are, but do the men actually patronize in it? <laughs> Very few men patronize contraceptive mm. vasectomy. Okay. Very few. I mean, there's still the, the misconception and the likening of it to castration. Mm. And so I'm very happy this caller came in and said that you can still perform. Everything will go on well. <laughs> it's just a pregnancy that will not come. Happen. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, Ophelia. Hello. Hi. How are you? Okay, <laughs> I'll leave Mary to answer that question. Uh, all right. Into who on the last year October? The oh, I wanted to know which one they are for different months is it the monthly one or the three monthly one but it looks like the three monthly one if her date is not due for her next injection she's safe so once she has sex she's not going to get pregnant unless she misses the date for her next injection and then we can she can be scared of her pregnancy even that one it depends on how many days she missed it but if she's within dates you don't need to worry about pregnancy. Okay. All right, Ophelia. So it looks like uh, you have to wait and see. That's, the most, that's that's all we can say. You can wait and see. Hello, good morning, Ernest. Yeah, good morning, madam. Yeah. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? By the grace, I'm also fine. Great. Talk to us. Okay, this morning I'll, uh, I'll use this uh, podium to say a big thank you to you guys. You are doing a such marvelous work. Thank you. Well, I'm a teacher and... I once gather my uh, my young girls, that's the teenagers, and therefore I teach them on how to protect themselves from getting pregnant. So sometimes I teach them on the normal, uh, that's the uh, the natural one, without taking any contraceptive. But which one I is the natural them, one? Please, he said. Which one is the natural one? That one is uh, well, without taking. Contraceptive. Uh -huh. That's uh, the 28 days cycle. Okay. Okay. That is uh, from the first day that uh, you gain your menses, you add, uh, you start from that actual day. Mm. That is the first day, then add the, uh, you count up to 28 days. Okay. So that's the natural one. So the first day to the second day, that's uh, most of the ladies have their menses. So the three days, that will add up to the same day and to make it 10 days. So that three days, you have a free period to have sex any time that you want. Mm. Someone also have five days. So if you have five days, you, uh, uh, you also have extra five days to have sex free. And okay. from that 10 day, 
you have a one week that's seven days that's seven days where all ladies have their ovulation so at that stage if you temper to have sex you are going to get pregnant so that is the stage i've been teaching my uh, my students if you have the desire to have sex that's where you can go and take a contraceptive okay okay yeah mm. All right, you're doing a very good job. Let me go and speak with Clements. Good morning, Clements. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing fine. Great. Talk to us, Clements. Yeah. Uh, I follow your conversation this morning on the control of birth. I am a man who married and we had our first child in 2015. Then my wife go for uh, this implant uh, contraceptive. But it was not good for her, so she decided to remove it. So since from 2019 up to date, we are now battling for another child. But we are not able to uh, conceive. So I don't know, is it because of the the contraceptive that we use or is, is uh, other issues that are maybe mm. preventing this? Uh, mm. uh, but Clement, uh, do you know the one your wife went for? Which one exactly? Yeah, the one you, they, they always insect it, they always put it at the arm here. Okay. Uh -huh. I don't know whether is that the one implant, the right? that thing. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. so is, is that one? Mm. The, then the, the tool here is, is for five years. But when she uh, put it on, it's, it's, it's less than a year, she removed it. Okay. But she was also using another uh, contraceptive called Lydia for some time. Okay. Uh -huh. But uh, he, she stopped those things since 2019. And up to date, we have been together battling. We haven't had any. Okay. Yeah. All right, Clement, thank you so much for calling. And uh, Mary will address your concern. All right. All right. Okay. So I'll start with Clement. Clement, please see a gynecologist. Okay. To All assess right. Thank the, you. To assess the two of you, there might be an under, underlying condition. You see, there's something we call secondary infertility. So the fact that you've had a child before doesn't necessarily mean that things won't change along the line irrespective of whether you use a contraceptive or not. Things can happen along the line. And so if you are not getting pregnant, please see a gynecologist. The two of you should be assessed to see what's going on. It doesn't mean the implants that your wife took for some few months is causing the infertility, no. So just see a gynecologist and then have yourself checked out. Um, i also like to talk about the teacher who is teaching the mm -hmm. children about mm -hmm. the natural method. And uh, yes, the um, use, using of your menstrual cycle, it's called the calendar method, is is a traditional, I don't like talking about it because I usually focus on modern contraceptive, okay? But the traditional ones are being there. And the, the issue with one of them is what the teacher just brought out about the 28 day cycle. Trust me, not everybody has a 28 day cycle for all women. Some has a less as 21 day cycle. And so using the menstrual cycle can put you in a lot of trouble. So mm. when he was talking, he mentioned that uh, from day seven, um, that's when you're ovulating, but it's not the same for everybody, for depending everybody. on your cycle. Some are 10. Exactly. So in fact, if you want to use that one, it's a whole school on its own. You actually have to study your cycle for six months and strike your average cycle before you can do all those calculations. I'm right. sure you've even forgotten some of the things he said. It's very hard to do that. Hmm. Let me speak with AC then. Good morning, AC. Good morning. Yes, how are you? Um... I would like to ask a question about two years ago, I took oral contraceptive, emergency one of sex, and then I still got pregnant. Another year, within a year, the same thing happened again. I took the contraceptive immediately after sex, but still got pregnant. And <laughs> thankfully, my boyfriend then, he's not my husband. Trusted me, so it wasn't too much of an issue. So I want to find out why that happened. Okay, Thank so you. that's the morning after pill that is popularly known as, right? Yes. Okay. All right, AC. How, AC, how old are you? I'm currently 25. Okay. So when you were taking these uh, morning after pills, how old were you? Were you a teenager then? No, I was I think 22, 
Okay, okay, all right. But will you ever put your daughter on a contraceptive? Yes, but I'll go for a different method, not okay. the, um, pills. All right, okay, because they failed you. Yes. All right, <laughs> thank you. But is, is, is it more than enough to pill a contraceptive? Is, is another thing, you know, we need to talk about? Yes, so I'm very happy about this very call because it's brought something that I really need to talk about. So the morning after pill is an emergency contraceptive. The word is emergency. So you only use it in the emergency situation. You don't use it as a regular contraceptive. So let's not be having a lot of emergencies, my ladies out there. So what happens is that um, not every contraceptive, in fact, all contraceptive methods, including the permanent ones, are not 100% effective. There is no method which is 100% effective. So there's a bit of failure rate. The good thing is that the longer the duration of the method, the more effective it is. And so a short-term method like the emergency contraceptive injectable will fail you more than a long-term method like the implant IED or the permanent method of vasectomy. Right. So although none of them is 100% effective. Even the, the vasectomy Even the not? vasectomy or the <laughs> tubal ligation. Yes, so you have situations. <laughs> yes, so you have situations where you 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 would have done it, but the person will still get pregnant, because. <laughs> All right, so um, usually sometimes maybe the stitches that were used maybe came off, and so the place is still open. Yeah, I mean these things happen. It's very rare for vasectomy and tubal ligation. It is very very rare. Remember, I said the longer the duration. The more effective, and so you implant and IUDs, vasectomy BTL are in the 99 percent effective. Okay, yes. but the rest are the not. The rest are quite lower, and the emergency contraceptive is one that is the effectiveness is quite low. Very low. Exactly, and also depending on how your the time that you take it, right? There's a whole, whole, whole thing to it. Let me speak with Aisha. Good morning, Aisha. How are you? I'm fine. What about you? Fine, thank you, Aisha. Talk to us. Okay, um, I got married out last year and um, I had my first, no, I was in my first child though because I had miscarriage and I didn't know what was the problem though. So I went in for DNC and my mom was telling me going for DNC is not good advice. So I still move on for the DNC and then I was expecting another baby on the way that one too i had a miscarriage i went in for dnt and um three days today too i've had another miscarriage again wow. so that's my three children gone away so oh. the doctor asked me do my husband have any disease or something and i told him no so he called the 12 hours to the hospital we did some tests and everything was okay and I don't know where the problem is coming from. And I've gone in for the this is the third time. And so what's the solution to the problem? So sorry about that, Aisha. Uh, I, I can only imagine what you're going through, but I pray that God will give you strength because it's not easy for anybody to go through this. So sorry about that. Mary, would you like to address, please? All right, so this is outside the contraception conversation. It's completely outside. It. Yeah. All right, so um, Madam, really sorry that you're going through that. Some of these things happen. Um, what I'll say is, it's got nothing to do. You are, not, you are not talking about contraception, but some of these things happen. Um, just uh, listen to your doctor's advice, and then um, the moment you get pregnant, I don't know if the moment you get pregnant, if you go and see a doctor, because since you have a history, then uh, your next pregnancy should be what we call a special pregnancy. Mm. So there should be attention to you. People like that, your doctors will advise. The moment you get pregnant. Complete bed, yeah, complete bed, bed rest. rest. So I don't know how quickly you are seeing your doctor immediately you get pregnant. And that's something you should look out for. But then see a gynecologist and then um, I think you get better care and advice right. from there. Hello, good morning, Catherine. Yeah, good morning. Ma Sorry for keeping you waiting. We know you've been on oh. for a while. Sorry. Oh, okay. Talk to us. Please, um, I did the injection, the three months one. I went for my last um, injection on the 18th December, and the date that they give uh, they gave me was um, that 21st 21st March. But when I calculated it, it's 12 weeks. When I calculated it, it's up to be on 13th 13th March. But I don't know. She added one week. I don't know whether it's 
mistake or something like I don't know. You, you feel the doctor made a mistake, eh? Eh, uh, so when I can say that the 12 weeks supposed to be on the 13th of March, but she wrote 21st of March. Okay, all right. Mary will address uh -huh. that. But will you put your teenage girl on the contraceptive? Yes. You will. If you will, which one? The injection. The injection. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Catherine. Okay, thanks. All, all right. right, so... um. I didn't get the date uh, she mentioned that she took the injection. Otherwise, I would have calculated myself. There's a special calendar that we use to do this calculation. So we don't calculate it like the normal, we use the normal calendar. For, for instance, somebody will take their injection on 10th March. And so in three months' time, it should be 10th. Uh, another 10th. Another 10th. Yeah. Ten. yeah, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work in mm. that way. Okay, let me speak with Augustina. Good morning, Augustina. Oh, please do call back if you can. So, yes, so the calculation is completely different. Yes. Okay. Yep. So it looks like sometimes we calculate it in our head. And you see, the thing yes. is, you don't want to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. So if the, you see a little bit, so you're like, no, 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 the doctor, you're making a mistake. mistake yeah. But can you take it before the date that's been given to you? All right. Yes, you can. So uh, you can actually take it a week before or a week after. <laughs> Or a week after okay. we don't like saying this out loud okay. so that people don't just keep delaying mm. and then i mean you are still okay so there's there's that leeway for people maybe who are traveling mm -hmm. or are not around so there's there's some um there's some leeway okay let me go to our good morning grace good morning please do i want to ask something <clears throat> my sister did the iud and the first month her mental didn't come the second month but after the three months she got pregnant I want to know the reason why. Okay. Before you go, let me ask you if you put your teenage daughter on contraceptive. Yes, of course. You will. Which one? Yes. Implant. Impl oh, wow. Okay. That's nice to hear. All right. Let me go. Uh, let, let's address the issue, please. All right. So one of the things health providers do when you attend to somebody who wants a contraception is what we call ruling out pregnancy. You have to be reasonably sure that the person wasn't pregnant at the time or at risk of pregnancy at the time that you were given the contraception. Sometimes things go wrong there. I'll give you a typical example. So I come and see, you come and see me today for a contraception method. You had sex this morning. Now, maybe you are into your safe period. Whatever sex you had before coming to me can result in pregnancy. If I give you the contraceptive today, it's not going to work against the sex that you had. Oh. Yeah. So it depends, and it also depends on what method you took. And so if the information doesn't go well for me to know that you had sex this morning, I'll give you the contraceptive method and then you go away, hey, everything is okay. We don't actually take necessary steps to prevent what had already happened. And so you go away and then what happened this morning then now grows and then it, lo it will look like the contraceptive method failed. So first of all, it's all about um, getting the accurate information, truthful information from clients. So in a situation like this, even though I've given you an implant, I had, I, I had to have given you an emergency contraceptive to cover you for what happened yesterday, then your implants can continue on working. Because there are some methods that it's not like when you take it today, immediately start working today. It takes some few days for you to have a um, maximum concentration of the hormones in your system so that you can have the I really effect. wish we, we asked Grace how far her sister is. Yeah. Because if her sister is just a month pregnant, then we know that you know, maybe their contraceptives didn't work. But yeah. if she's like three months gone, then maybe she was pregnant before she got onto the contraceptive. It's good. It's good. Let me go to Obuasi. Good morning, Hamama. Good morning, madam. How are you? I'm doing well, please. Great. Talk to us. Okay. Please, I'm on the, at the age of uh, 33 years before I give birth to my first son. So, please, I want to ask, can I go in for that? Because what? I want to, I don't know, even like I'm getting old, can I go in for that without any infection? Can you go for a contraceptive? Yes, okay. without any infection. Okay, all right. Okay, so any side effects. But Hamata, will you put your teenage girl on contraceptive? No, please. Why? I've taken before. Oh, right. Okay. Mm. Okay, <laughs> let me come to Mary to address that issue. All right. So, yes, you can take a contraceptive method at, at your age. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There are hormonal methods and there are non-hormonal methods. So the funny thing is that the side effects, the culprits are the hormonal method. 
the non-hormonal method and the IUD is is one of the non-hormonal method, the copper IUD. So if you are the type who is afraid of side effects, your best bet is a non-hormonal method, which is the copper IUD. You don't have any systemic side effects, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but at your age, you can take any of the contraceptive methods. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hmm. Anyway, um, I think I have a message on Facebook coming through and they read um, Thanks for the retouch on contraceptives. I used to be scared to take on contraceptive and I'm suffering now Though it's a blessed suffering uh, that is I have a seven month old baby and I'm three months uh, gone again That I regret not taking the doctor's advice So uh, it looks like uh, when people have babies the possibility that they will have another is high so you ought to go on contraceptive. Yeah. Now, talking about the teenagers, you know, like Amamata said, she, she doesn't think she'll take, put her child on, on a contraceptive. My concern is to do with the side effects, the psychological aspect of it, where the child starts putting on weight, where the child starts, uh, you know, having irregular menstrual cycle. How do we handle it psychologically? on that child all right so like i said uh, once you visit a healthcare provider you are taking through extensive counseling it's not that the moment you get there now take your method so you are taking through extensive counseling you are even asked about how you will feel about certain side effects and based on your responses a good provider will actually eliminate some methods for you and say based on your accept uh, acceptability of certain side effects these and these and these will better suit you the thing about Ghanaian women is she comes to you a clear answer to injection so me to injection, I want uh, injection. Ah, that's, that's an issue. Meanwhile, your situations are different. And so sometimes our ladies need to listen to health providers because your, your, your usage of a method will be based on what is acceptable for you, not what is acceptable for somebody, somebody else. Mm. And so we, 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 we prepare people for these side effects. And the thing is, there's always the opportunity to always go back to your provider. Some of these side effects can be managed. And then for some two, you can switch the method. You can always start with a method. If it's not acceptable, you can always switch to a different one. All right. Let me speak with Nancy. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning. Yes. Um, okay. So I want to share experience from my side. Please that is ahead. one. Um, I took the injectable and I realized I was bloating. So I had to switch from after a month. Then I went in for the implant now. Okay, so I did that one and right after three months I decided to go back to having a child so I took it off. And right after I, I conceived, um, I had a topic. Okay. Immediately I took it off, I was able to conceive but I had a topic. Okay. And uh, yes, and it resulted in taking off my, my tube. So. As an IV, even if I want to have a child, I need to go for IVF. Right. But yeah. uh, were you told that it was a result of the contraceptive? Um, I was told that, yes, yeah, situations like this, yes, that can cause it. That is what I was told. Right. Okay, Nancy. Um, let me come to Mary here. All right. Okay. So that's another of the misconceptions. Okay. So ectopic pregnancy is pregnancy, which is outside the womb. It can happen to any woman. In fact, out of every eight pregnancies, one will be an ectopic. It doesn't matter whether you're on contraception or not. There's no known cause. Okay, there can be some risk factors, but it's not because of the contraception. Contraception does not cause ectopic pregnancy. If ectopic pregnancy will occur, it will occur whether you have a, you were on the contraceptive method or not. Mm. There are people who have never used a contraceptive method and have had ectopic pregnancies okay. and their tubes are off. So okay. what about them also? Okay, let's go to Tamale. Good morning, Robert. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great, but I, I wanted to uh, ask uh, your guest in studio. Yes, out here, uh, there, there, there's some misconception about uh, going in for this uh, bed controls. Some have the misconception that when you go in for either the implant or the injection, you would grow fat. I don't know what's the ideology because I've even read on some of the leaflets, there's no side effect of going for, but what? results in people going for that becoming fat okay now yes. before you go will you put your teenage girl on contraceptive uh, i wouldn't do so my Why? reason being that, uh, your reason? My reason being that mm -hmm. one when you expose them to it you are exposing them to going into unprotected sex and not only for pregnancy they, they can get other form of uh, diseases as a result of that 
So why not just not put the child on, but advise the child? What not, about uh, condom? Uh, uh, what about the usage of condom? It's also part of contraceptives. Yes, the usage of condom is part of it, but nonetheless, it's, it's the good parenting that would make your child not even go into sexual intercourse. Really? Okay. <laughs> Thank you very yes, much. For, for, the, for, for my first question of why is it that people grow fat as a result of going into these birth control measures? Okay. Did you answer that? The depot, the implantos, and the rest. And mm. it, really, you see from the patient that, yes, this person is going fat, not because of the diet, but as a result of the injection. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Mary? All right. Yes. So weight gain is one of the side effects associated with some of the hormonal contraceptive methods. All right. And, and like I was saying, there are some people who, for them, weight gain is unacceptable. And so when you are cancelled, you are best taking a non-hormonal contraceptive method. Which that ones are which the non-hormonal? That's a very good one. All right. So the non-hormonal, the non-hormonals. Unfortunately, all the short-term methods are all hormonal. The pills, the injectable, all of them contain hormones. The non-hormonal ones are the long-acting ones, which is the IUD, the copper IUD. We have different types of IUD. So there's one which is copper. It's put in your womb. It doesn't contain any hormones and so you don't have the issue of waste gain with that the tubal ligation there are no hormones in your system so you don't have any waste gain condoms they are non-hormonal and so for those ones you will not get any weight issues of weight gain in fact it can be weight gain or weight loss so it's weight changes all right the other thing is that usually the weight gain is not very significant about two to three kilos especially with the injectables if you are gaining weight excessively we need to um, uh, investigate other factors okay there are people who are not on any contraceptive method and then they gain weight especially after childbirth so you need to look at other factors it's okay. not always just related contraceptive. let me go to one uh, nasina good morning hello nasina all right, Eunice, good morning. Morning. How are you? I'm fine. Great. Talk to us. Please, Eunice. I wanted to ask of the contraception when you are taking them and then you decided to stop. I, I was taking them when I was in SS year two. I decided to stop. But when I stopped it, now I want to conceive, but not. I can't be able to conceive, but I took the implant too. Okay, now help us understand. SS meaning how old were you? Mm, I was 22 years. 22, when you were in secondary school? Four yes, two. please. Okay, and then you went on it. So how long did you go on the pill for? Two years. 22, when you were in secondary school? Yes, please. Lower the volume of your television set, please. The pills, I, I went for the implant first. I went for the implant first. For the implant, it was going up to nine months rather than my mother said it's not good, I should remove it. Okay. So I removed it and then I went for the contraception. Okay. And then I was taking that one. And my year two time, I decided to stop because the one I, the guy I was with decided to get married to me. So I stopped taking it. Up to now, we are, we are in five years now, but I can't conceive. And then I don't know whether it's from the implant or the contraception because when the man, when we sleep with each other and then he tried to release, I don't feel the releasing. I don't know where it is because of the contraceptive or whatever. All right. Okay. So Let me bring Mary in here. Ask. Okay. Let me bring Mary in here. Don't worry at all, Eunice. Mary. Okay. All right. So, madam, please see a gynecologist together with your partner. Okay. And have some tests run on you to find out what's going on. It's not because of the implants you took. And it's not because of the pills. So just see a, a gynecologist and then have... And then, so that some invest other investigations can be carried out. Because mm. five years is quite a while, right? Yeah. Okay. So, Eunice, uh, thank you so much for calling. And uh, we are grateful to all who called. Uh, I wish I could ask Eunice if you ever put her teenage child 
on contraceptive being that when she was in secondary school she was on contraceptive herself but unfortunately she's gone uh, today we've had uh, diverse opinions with regards to uh, the parents who are willing to put their children on uh, the contraceptives and for those who say they don't want to put their children on contraceptives however we ought to reduce uh, their teenage pregnancies in the system so how do we do it we have to put them on contraceptives and like I said I had a conversation with some 14 year olds who said early as who told me that uh, they know about sex already they've been they are being taught in school they know about the reproductive organs so why can't we tell them that if they have to go on contraceptive to prevent STIs and to prevent pregnancy we can't do it we ought to do it for them and so we don't have to be hypocrites but let's face the reality and we have had this conversation with Mary Tay she is a clinical quality advisor with Marie Stopes Ghana she has actually told us a lot uh, with regards to the types of contraceptives that are available that you can give to your children and the ones she advises for the children are the long acting reversible and the short acting reversible for the permanent ones she's saying that you can only take it if you choose not to have children again mary your final words before you go all right so um contraceptive methods are safe for everybody it's okay to start with a, a method if you're not comfortable with you switch to a different one just take your your lifestyle into consideration and then um, a caller uh, mentioned that contraceptive will not protect you against STIs except condoms. So you can use the contraceptive method and use condoms in addition to prevent STIs. If you have any questions on your reproductive health, you can always call Maristos on 0800 20 You can also reach us on WhatsApp on 0244 20 We'll take off your reproductive needs from Menaki. That's your first message to menopause your last message. Thank you so much for being here, Merite. Super grateful. And a big thank you to Marie Stoops for helping us with this particular conversation. Up next is the relationship segment where we are talking about sacrifices and relationship. You don't want to miss that conversation. And later, we'll bring you some entertainment with a gospel musician. But Mary, will you sacrifice in your relationship? Sacrifice my relationship for what's what's at stake. I like that. What's what's at stake? I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> On that note, we'll take a quick break. When we come back and see a dual leader conversation, do stay with us.